So I, I dream every night, just, just about every single night without fail. Sometimes they're epic. It's like hours long, like you watch an entire movie. And last night, I, or maybe, you know, last thing in the morning, I dreamed, and I, I, I had a dream with Donnie in it, Donnie Coleman. And it might have been like a Tuesday morning men's group where we, we go out visiting people. So Donnie and I were paired off to go visit. And he was taking me to his house or somewhere that was way south of town. And we were driving in two vehicles, you know, side by side. He was on my left. and I, So we're both driving vehicles, but we're hold, having a conversation as if we're sitting in the same vehicle side by side. Wow. So that was the dream. Just a few minutes ago, I was here walking to church and I was kind of power walking because I was a few minutes behind. And who do you think pulled up beside me and offered Donnie. me a ride? <laughs> he pulled up and he said, hey, Wes, hop on in. And I was like, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. Wow. Like, mm. That's cool. It was a prophetic dream. <laughs> yeah, cool. You're going to get a lift to church in the morning. So that was kind of neat. But... Um, I had it on my heart a couple of weeks ago to, to, let's get some prayer. No, let, let's do this. I know, I know you all had said something about, Donnie had said it too, sometimes that you all sing and, and everything in the morning. And I thought, well, maybe we could do that. Maybe we could start off with a song. We start off class. And many times i mean i dream and sometimes i wake up with a song in my heart maybe you do sometimes too you'll wake up and have a song does that happen to you all mm -hmm. okay. i've had it all day yeah. yeah i'll wake up through the night and i'll be it'll be a song yeah. well if i wake up in the morning and i have a song playing in my head i go to online and i pull that song up and i play it mm -hmm. you know i just let's bring up the one because in the psalms it says uh, i think it's psalms even at night, my heart instructs me. Or he gives, he gives to his beloved even in their sleep. I'd have to look up what psalm it is. But even in, even in the night, my heart instructs me. Just because we're sleeping, it may not be that we clock out. And it's like God can speak to us in our sleep. It hasn't even been a year. It was last December. I was praying, God, you know, I prayed around Christmas and Easter. I said, please help me to see Jesus more clearly than I ever have before. And one night I had a dream, and in the dream, somebody mentioned Genesis 3, 1 through 11. And then it's like, I was still dreaming, but I woke up and I went back into my dream, and someone said Genesis 3, 1 through 11. And then in my dream, I woke up and I was talking to Mary, and I was like, you won't believe it. Last night I dreamed, and twice they mentioned Genesis 3, 1 through 11. That was still part of my dream. And then I really woke up. So in the morning I woke up and I had had Genesis 3, 1 through 11 in my head three times throughout the night. So what did I do in the morning? Went to Genesis yeah. 3, 1 through 11. And it talks about them taking the bite of the forbidden fruit. And so it's the fall. That's what it is. And so here I am. I pray in real life, in waking life, I pray, dear Lord, please help me to see Jesus more clearly than I ever have before this Christmas. And I go to sleep, and I have a dream, and it hammers on me, Genesis 3, 1 through 11. I get up in the morning and I read it. It's like, and, I, and so I'm asking, is, the, is my dream and this scripture an answer to my prayer? And I, I believe that it was. Mm -hmm. You want to know who Jesus is? He saves us from the fall. So he wasn't just a nice teacher that appeared on the scene. You want to know who he is? He's the one who fixes Genesis 3, 1 through 11. So it's like, I don't know, you have a, you have a plumber who fixes a plumbing problem. Hi! Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. I just got off work. <laughs> you got a burlesque this morning. Yes, 4.30. Wow. Everybody, this is my wife, Mary. Uh, it's good to see you. Were you working the midnight shift? Mm -mm. Oh, no, VMI just had an event for rats. I wasn't expecting you till 11. But. Uh, yeah, I, I would have been here sooner, but it's a story that I'll tell you after. I know, I'm good. I don't feel myself up with this. So, 
you have a plumber who fixes a plumbing problem, or you have a plumber who installs plumbing. If you don't have any plumbing and you don't have any plumbing problem, you don't need a plumber. I mean, if, if there's no plumbing around and there's no plumbing to fix, what, what is a plumber? What is he? It's like the problem, we have a plumber to fix the problem. Or we have the plumber, I should have chosen a different example than a plumber, because <laughs> plumber problem, plumber problem. If you want to know who, <coughs> the purpose of the plumber is to fix the plumbing problem. Anyway, so, help me see Jesus. Read Genesis 3, 1 through 11. Genesis 3, 1 through 11. Okay. And, I, and anyway, I, so my dream, I think, was given by God as an answer to my prayer in real life, in waking life. So now I, anyway. He had it like mine last night too. He dreamed about me. Yeah. <laughs> he noticed. He noticed. You missed it. I was walking here and Donnie pulled up and gave me a ride to work. After he had your dream of being here, we walked in each other. That's funny. <laughs> yes. So, and the Lord might be, you know, maybe you're going to take. We'll just keep our eyes open and our ears open. And yeah. Just, so whether you had a dream last night or whether you've had a dream in the past or whether you're going to have a dream tonight, let's all get our antenna up to be like, okay, Wes dreamed about Donnie. Donnie gave him a ride to work. And now we're talking about dreams, which I don't, have, I don't even have that on my paper. So let's be looking. Maybe someone you know had a dream. We know about Joseph. He interpreted dreams. We know about dreams in the Bible. Jo the other Joseph. I was, I was talking about Joseph uh, in Pharaoh and Egypt. Mm -hmm. There was Joseph, Jesus' dad on earth. He had a dream. He said, get out of town. They're going to kill you. And he's like, come on back to town. They're, they're gone. They're not going to kill you. Marry the woman. You know, he, Joseph had dreams. Anyway, so let's be on the lookout for dreams. But can, can we start off today with a song? Is that all right, Nancy? Well, yeah. <laughs> and you might know it. You might not. Um, I would think you would. It might be Michael W. Smith from 20 years ago. I don't know. Mm. But it, we can just sing through the refrain a few times. I don't know the chorus. And join in as you, as you know it or join in as you learn it because it's pretty simple. But um, Lord, we want to invite your presence into this room. In a more full way, I think you are already here. Yes. You might have started us right off the bat talking about dreams, even before we'd officially prayed. But I pray that you'd be here. and Just as the wind blows, we don't know where it's going. So it is with those who are of your spirit. So please teach us. We pray this in Jesus' name. And here's the song. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search the world. I can search uh, through all eternity. Through all eternity, Lord. And find there is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search through all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. Second person songs where you sing directly to the Lord. That's yeah. that's that's when you really get into his presence. Yeah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to him. Alright. So a few of you weren't here last week and I only posted class last night. So we're gonna do a tiny bit of review and then we're gonna jump into it. We were talking a little bit about economic terms. <coughs> We have the domain of economics in our, in our world, and we can kind of take some of that aspect and put it in to God's world. 
So one of the things we were talking about was benefits. We all can get a job that has benefits. Do you have benefits from your job, um, Rolf? No. Okay. I've only had a couple jobs that had benefits. Huh? Part-time. Part-time. Okay. Randall's drawing on his benefits right now. He's got a pension. He's going to bring uh, breakfast for us next week, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I go to the doctor this Wednesday, but it's for the compensation doctor. Compensation. Okay. Uh, where I work for, I for my black lung. Okay. But naturally, they're going to tell me that I, don't, that I don't have it. It's just part of the process that we're doing. Okay. <laughs> Okay. But you can prove that. I have two other sources to say I do that. I've done been approved, it's just a matter of I've done been approved, it's just a matter of State of Virginia or this compensation company. Okay. Well, we can pray for a favorable outcome for, for you on that. Um. Well, Psalm 103 uh, specifically talks about benefits, the benefits of the Lord. And just the first few verses, it it's, goes like this. And you might be familiar with it. But it, so this is theological and this is talking about the Lord. But in your mind, I mean, it uses the same word benefits. And I doubt that the writer of this psalm was thinking of employment benefits when he wrote it. Probably not at all, but we can think of benefits. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that, it was, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. It also, in, in the NIV, it says the Lord, um, so that your youth is renewed. The Lord works righteousness and justice for those who are oppressed. So we want the Lord to work righteousness and justice on your behalf, Randall, with the case coming up. But these are benefits. Pardoning, pardoning iniquity, healing diseases, redeeming from the pit, crowning with love and compassion, satisfying your years with good things so your youth is renewed like the eagles. And what, the first one on this list of benefits is that he pardons all your iniquities or he forgives all your sins. But think about that. He pardons your iniquities. We'll come back to, to that one in a moment. But these are benefits. And last week we talked about incentives. So in economic terms, uh, one of the examples I used was a farmer might have a, a swath of land and the government will give him an incentive not to grow crops this year. I, I don't exactly know why they do that, but there's something about maybe a, if there's not as much food, if there's more food, it's less expensive. So maybe that you don't grow the food so that people who, I don't know why they do the incentive, but there's an incentive not to grow food on your property. Okay, um, I can't think of any other incentives, right. but they give you an incentive to go green or the gas company. They says you can install a digital thermostat in your home and we will give you $250 rebate. So there's an incentive to do something. And in John chapters 14 and 15, we see some incentives that Jesus is promising for those who will keep his commandments. And there's, um, so John chapter 14, at uh, verse 21, it says this. Well, I'll give you a second to look it up. Verse 21. Verse 21. Sof and Ron, you brought some peach cobbler over there. It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> so John 14, verse 21, Jesus says, 
He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and will disclose myself to him. Okay. So right there we have three incentives for keeping his commandments. If you keep the commandments, you love him. If you love him, you will be loved by the Father. You will, Jesus will love you, and Jesus will disclose himself to you. These are three incentives to keep his commands. Skip down to verse 23. He says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. So there's two more incentives. We love by the Father, love by Jesus. Jesus will disclose himself to us. Jesus and the Father will come to us and they will make their abode with us. Yeah. So we've got five incentives for keeping his commandments. So it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in us because they, they make their abode with us. Right. I, yeah. Yes, I think in this context he's talking about him and the Father. But right. yes. Right. Good. But yeah. right. And they're about to send, he's about to talk about sending the Holy Spirit in verse 26. Mm -hmm. But if you go to chapter 15 and we go down to, um, we'll get a running start. So John 15, verse 9, Jesus says, Just as the Father has loved me, I also loved you. I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So that's a sixth incentive to keep his commandments. We will abide in his love. A few more verses later at uh, verse 14, he says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. That's a seventh incentive to do what he commands us. We will be his friends. Amen. So the benefits of the Lord, now these are incentives. And incentives is my word. You won't find that in the Bible. <laughs> The Father will love us. Jesus will love us. Jesus will disclose himself to us. Both of them will come to us. They will make their abode with us. We will abide in his love and we will be his friends. Obeying his commandments is sounding pretty good, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. Okay, so we're going to turn up the heat a little bit. John chapter 15, verse 17. Jesus says, this I command you that you love one another. Let's back up to John 15, verse 12. And we're going to turn up the heat just a little bit more. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. And at this point we pause and we ask ourselves a question. How did Jesus love us? Or how does Jesus love us? Patient with us. He's kind, gentle. He's self-controlled. <laughs> Patient, Repentance. kind, gentle, self-control. Verse 13, yeah. This is what love is. Yeah, verse 13 right there. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. So if, if we're supposed to love one another just as Jesus has loved us, and he lays down his life for us, then that means we're supposed to lay down our lives for <coughs> one another. That do, I don't know if that means necessarily that we, we go to the cross for somebody, but it might be that wow. we, uh, we have 40, 50 years of life left. You can, you can lay it all down in one go. Excuse me, but I have to leave. Yes, sir. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay. Like... So Santa Claus, if he was real in the way that we think, imagine him for kids. He's got a big sack of toys, right? He can take that big sack of toys and set the whole thing down at one time. He could lay it down. Another thing he could do is to take out one present at a time until the bag is empty. So we can take our 30, 40, 50 years that we have left of life and we can lay our lives down literally for someone, take a bullet for someone like that gentleman up at... Bentley, Berkeley, 
Pennsylvania at, at the Trump attempt assassination. He literally laid down his life for his family and took a bullet for them. And we can do that. Or maybe what we do is that every day I lay down my life for you. I, I will pray for you every day. I will, I will sacrifice my desire today for you. I, you know, we can, you can do it quickly or you can do it slowly. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. And I was going to start off with this, like the title of today's lesson. I mean, we're already 20 minutes into it, but here it is. Um, do we have any um, wrestling fans in the room? Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, The Rock, the... I don't know what he's called, the, the pressure cooker, whatever that pun. <laughs> <laughs> That's not real. There's someone called, I don't know if he's the Punisher or the, the Undertaker. 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 He's not a pressure cooker, but <laughs> if I would be a wrestler, maybe I'd be the pressure cooker. <laughs> Any wrestling fans? Used to be, yeah. I mean, years ago. Oh, that's I watched it. Yeah. yeah, used to be. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, uh, you've seen it. Yeah. I, I've thrown out yeah. some names. You know, yeah. you've seen these people. Yeah. John. Rod Roddy Piper. Who's that one guy? Yeah. Rick Flair. Rick Flair. Flair. Thank you. So here it is. It's not right now. This is not Friday night SmackDown. This is Sunday morning SmackDown. You know, ding, 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 ding. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Get your tickets now. Incentives versus iniquity. Sunday morning SmackDown. Incentives versus iniquity. They're in the ring together. I'm just, I've done economic stuff and now I'm doing wrestling. Like we're going on this journey of imagination. Incentives, which are really great, versus iniquity, which is not so great. And these are in a conflict. Because... You don't have to turn there, but let me ask you a question whether this would apply to you today or it has applied to you in the past, or you can imagine that maybe you're flirting with it. There is a speech that Peter gives in Acts chapter 8 to a gentleman. And I'm going to give you the speech. I'm just going to tell it to you. But I'm going to leave out the first part of it. This is what Peter, the apostle Peter, who denied Jesus, this is what he said to this man of Samaria. He said, You have no part or portion in this matter because your heart is not right before God. Therefore, repent of this wickedness of yours and pray the Lord that if possible, the intention of your heart may be forgiven you. For I perceive that you are in the gall of bitterness and the bondage of of iniquity. The man that Peter was talking to was Simon the Magician. And Simon the Magician had just asked Peter and the other disciples, he said, he offered them money. He said, he, he saw them laying their hands on people and they received the Holy Spirit. And he said, give me this authority too that whoever I lay my hands on would receive the Holy Spirit. And Peter says to him, he said, may your money, your silver perish with you. For you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or portion in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Therefore, repent of this wickedness of yours and pray the Lord that if possible, the intention of your heart may be forgiven you. For I perceive that you are in the gall of bitterness and the bondage of iniquity. Years ago, I would just read over this story and be like, what does that even mean? How does that apply? But last year, I think God put my nose in it. And I kind of felt like, I wonder if Peter could be saying to me what Peter said to Simon. Or God could say to me what Peter said to Simon. Your heart's not right before God. You're in the bondage of iniquity. I'd be like, how am I in the bondage of iniquity? Well, Jesus said, this is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. 
just as I have loved you. And what was one of the benefits of the Lord we read in Psalm 103? The very first benefit of the Lord? Forget none of his benefits. Who pardons all your iniquities. That's Psalm 103. That was the first in the list of benefits of the Lord. He pardons iniquities. If we keep going in Psalm 103, it says, He does not treat us as our sins deserve, nor repay us according to our iniquities. So if we, if Jesus commands us to love one another just as he has loved us, and Jesus is God, and God pardons iniquities, and God does not treat people as their sins deserve, and God does not repay people according to their iniquities, then we are to pardon iniquities, and we are to not treat people as their sins deserve, and we... Uh, we're supposed to give up those iniquities. And this is where it's really unfair. I, I, saw, I, I mean, ironically unfair, it's kind of humorously unfair, but it's like, so let me get this straight, Lord. This person does something against me and it hurt me. And now I'm angry at that person. And when I'm angry at that person, now I'm the one who's sinning. That's not fair. They did that to me. And now I have to be the one to pay for it. And you're telling me if I don't forgive them, then I'm breaking your commandment. They started it. And now I have to pay for what the damage that they did. And I have to confess that I'm they did that to me. And now I'm in iniquity because I'm not forgiving them. This is not fair. The whole situation is not fair. I was perfectly fine until they screwed everything up. But Jesus says, and, and I, I wish I had. There are lists of stuff. I, I mean, they can come one after the other of all these different things. The servant. The, the master forgives the two servants, forgives this one a lot. No, no. The master forgives this servant, his debt. This servant does not for. Let me slow down. The master forgives a huge debt off of this servant. This servant says, thank you. He goes out and finds his other servant who owes him a, a little bit, and he does not forgive it. And, the, and when it's discovered, the master brings him in and says, I had mercy on you. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant? Well, you know what? Because you didn't, off to the jail with you. You're going to be handed over to the torturers until you pay back every penny. So that's one. The master hands the servant over to the torturers until he pays it back. And Simon, or I'm sorry, yeah, Simon Peter tells Simon the magician. Peter tells Simon, he says, I perceive you are in the gall of bitterness. That's poison. Gall is poison. You're in the gall of bitterness. So you have poison in you and the bondage of iniquity. You're in bondage to this iniquity. So we have incentives for keeping the commandments and we find ourselves in bondage to iniquity because we're not willing to forgive. Because it hurt. And not only are we in bondage, we're in jail. And not only are we in jail, we're being tortured. And not only are we being tortured, we're being poisoned. And if you have experienced bitterness or unforgiveness, or if you're there right now, you'd be like, yeah, he's, he's speaking symbolically about poison, and he's speaking symbolically about jail, and he's speaking symbolically about torture, torture, and he's speaking symbolically about bondage, but I actually know that that's a current, present-day re reality that's happening. I can feel it. I can feel the chains. I am running and I can feel that parachute dragging me behind. I'm swimming and I can feel that anchor pulling me underwater. I know that I'm not free. Even though I have all the incentives in the world to obey his command and to forgive, his incentive is still not powerful enough to motivate me. Right now, 
iniquity is in the ring and has the incentive in a headlock, right? <laughs> I don't care how strong you are, incentives. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you on the mat, and we're gonna count to ten. So on our Sunday morning SmackDown, where we have incentives to obey Jesus' commands and we have the iniquity of breaking Jesus' commands in the ring and they are going at it, who's going to win? You decide. In your life, you get to decide. You decide who wins this match. It's the... You know how they say wrestling is rigged? They decide before they go out on stage who's going to win. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll, we'll do this. You can count me to nine and I'll hop up and I'll count you to nine and we'll hop up. And, <laughs> and, but at the end of it, I'm, I'm going to walk away with the belt, right? Well, you know what? It's already been decided who wins here if we align ourselves with it. So I want, let's go to 1 John. And my, my, my great... My great new joke is if you get to Second John, you've gone too far, you know. But okay, thanks. Where's Second John? <laughs> if you get to Third John, you've gone a little bit too far. <laughs> Mary doesn't want to laugh at this. I say that they get funnier with it. Every time you use them, they get funnier. So you got First and Second Peter, then First, Second, Third John. So First John chapter one. We'll read verses 5 through 10. First John 1, 5 through 10. This is the message we have heard from him, Jesus. This is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My suspicion is that the purpose for jail and the purpose for torturers and the purpose for gall, which is poison of bitterness, and the purpose for bondage might be to get me to acknowledge that I am actively, presently, willfully sinning against the Lord when I don't forgive. I think it's Psalm 32. It says something like, Blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven. Blessed is he who the Lord does not count his transgression against him. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. I mean, that's NIV. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover up my iniquity. So, the tricky thing, they did that to me. It hurt me. I am unhappy. I am angry. 
but I don't know if I've yet sinned. But once I say I will never forgive them for sinning or for doing that again, now I've sinned. When they hurt me, I haven't sinned. When I'm angry, I haven't yet sinned. Although Jesus says, if you're angry with your brother, it's as if you've committed murder. But you also can be angry and not sin. You know, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. So I might be hurt, but I haven't sinned. I might be angry, but I haven't sinned. But when I say, I'm gonna, when I treat them as their sins deserve, when I repay them according to their iniquities, when I don't forgive them, now I've sinned. And if I say I don't sin, I make God to be a liar. His word is not in me. If I say that I don't have, if I, I'm deceiving myself and the truth is not in me, according to John, 1 John 1. So maybe I'm going to be handed over to the torturers. I'm going to feel that poison on the inside until I acknowledge I am sinning by breaking Jesus's commandment, by not loving that person the way that Jesus loved me. I have broken his commandment. And now I don't get those incentives. I don't receive the benefit of the incentives. Instead, I'm in bondage to my iniquity. You don't have to turn there, but it's Isaiah 64. There, there's this interplay. <clears throat> Isaiah, the end of Isaiah 63 and all of Isaiah 64. There's an interplay between who is doing it. Is the Lord doing it or am I doing it? Did the people of Israel do it or did God do it? Because they say this. Uh, let's see. So this would be Isaiah 64, starting in verse 5, the last, second half of verse 5. Behold, you, God, were angry, for we sinned. We continued in them for a long time, and shall we be saved? For all of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy garment, and all of us wither like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, who arouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the power of our iniquities. So what was one of the incentives? Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my command. Or if you keep my commandments, you love me. And if you love me, I will disclose myself to you. I will disclose myself to you. In other words, you will see my face. And what does it say here? You have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the power of our iniquities. Follow the commandments, love Jesus, see his face. Break the commandments, he hides his face. Here's the prayer. Here's the prayer of the people in Isaiah. When that happens, he, he, God's angry. He hides his face because they sinned. He gave them over to the power of their iniquities, the bondage of their iniquities. And they pray, but now, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are potter and all of us are the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, O Lord nor remember iniquity forever. Behold, look now, all of us are your people. Your holy cities have become a wilderness. Zion has become a wilderness. Jerusalem, a desolation. Our holy and beautiful house where our fathers praised you has been burned by fire and all our precious things have become a ruin. Will you restrain yourself at these things, O Lord? Will you keep silent and afflict us beyond measure? Sunday morning smackdown. Incentive and iniquity are in the ring. Who's going to win? You decide. If we 
confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify or sanctify us from all unrighteousness. I'm in the I am overpowered by my iniquities. I am poisoned by my iniquities. I am in bondage of my iniquities. I can't get free from my iniquities. Well, guess what? If I confess my iniquity, he will cleanse me. He will forgive me. He will set me free. And that's some good news. And according to the Bible, the winner has already been decided before they even get into the ring. If we choose and keep his command, his commandment, we shouldn't need any incentives. <laughs> good little soldiers don't need an incentive. They don't need a sign on bonus. They just need an order from the from the general. That should be enough for us. We should have a healthy fear of the Lord that it, he, we don't need any incentives. He just says, do it. And we say, sir, yes, sir. Because I need to let us get out of here. But if I, if I continue in my iniquity, maybe, I'm gonna, maybe I get to determine the length of my bondage. It could, be to, it could be right now I could be set free if I would just say, you know, please forgive me for being unforgiving, which is what I'm doing. Please forgive me for being unforgiving. Please forgive me for being unforgiving toward that person. And now cleanse and purify my heart toward that person. Because I can't do it. It's going to have to be you. But I will confess that I am unforgiving. And please forgive me for being unforgiving. We didn't have time for it. But you can go read in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 30. Back up to dudes 27, 28, 29, 20, 30. Read the whole stuff. Blessings and curses. I started skimming it this morning. There's like one chapter of blessings. There's two chapters of curses. <laughs> and it all hinges. I have set before you today life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life. I have set before you today incentives and iniquity. And the choice is yours. What's it going to be? If you go this way, you get all this stuff. You're going to get love. You're going to be abide in my love. You're going to see my face and a host of other things. Because let me finish with this. Psalm 103. We started there. Let's end there. Because this. As for man, tiny little man, his days are like grass. They're short. As a flower of the field, he flourishes. When the wind has passed over, it is no more. Its place acknowledges it no longer. It's gone. A man is a dandelion. They're his years. But this is a contrast. <laughs> We're drawing a distinction. This is a tiny little short man blown away. But the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness on children's children to those who keep his covenant and remember his precepts to do them. Jesus said, keep my commandments. That involves doing. John says, confess our sins. That involves doing. What are you going to do with the iniquity done against you? Are you going to forgive that iniquity? If you can't forgive that iniquity, are you going to ask for forgive? What are you going to do? The good news is the moment that we, according to the word, the moment that we've we confess, I'm sorry. He starts doing the cleansing process. Pray the Lord. Peter said to Simon, pray the Lord that if possible, the intention of your heart may be forgiven you. Good news. It's possible. <laughs> First John says the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. It's possible. It is possible to be cleansed of that unforgiveness. It is possible with the Lord. With man, it is impossible. With God, all things are possible. I'm preaching, by the way. It's possible that parachute, the anchor, they can be cut off, according to Jesus, by the power of Jesus. 
through the blood of Jesus. It's possible. Let's pray. Amen. Amen. God, I pray that those things which don't exist, you would call the things that are not as if they were. You would speak it into existence. I forgive you in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, seal this word in our hearts. Help us to confess our iniquity of being unforgiving toward people who've hurt us. And please be faithful to your word and cleanse us from this bitterness and this gall. Give us the antidote of your blood so that we can be holy and purified and refined people called by your name to be faithful ministers of Christ to a world that is perishing. Please bless the service upstairs. May your Holy Spirit come in a cloud and power and presence to minister to us, to get us right with you and have the intentions of our heart purified that we can start drawing people to you by lifting up Jesus. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Got to sign off, Aunt Sue. See you. Bye-bye.